Hey everybody, uh, it's been a while since I shot one of these, but uh, we just released a new version of Elm's Learning Network. It's a 050 release, and I wanted to give kind of a quick tour because a lot of interface stuff is, has been uh, pretty drastically cleaned up and improved. Uh, so we're moving towards materialized CSS a lot more. Um, so you're, you're going to start to have the application feel more like an application and feel like uh, a Google application specifically. So quickly reviewing the UI, you've got you know, some tab components here. Uh, our network uses a consistent flyout. We're starting to use color and iconography uh, very consistently across the platform. Um, pro user profile is becoming a more customizable thing, <laughs> you know, as opposed to before, it was just, hey, I logged in, and that was about it, um, as well as just basics of how things function, right? So when I hover over stuff, I should get a color consistent with the application I'm using. Um, so for example, if I go to a different system, we'll say a media system, you can see there's been a slight change in color, but I know how to use this system, right? It's got the same type of branding, it knows who I am, it has my picture and profile. Um, if I click privacy settings, these pop-ups open the same way, there's a radial burst on the button that's the same consistency everywhere, right? Really going for uh, consistency. And same with, you know, flyouts from the right, I click something on the right, it flies out from the right. Um, drop downs using the materialized style, uh, using materialized uh, components such as the card, presentation purposes. I've also got lots and lots of new display modes for things and easier ways of embedding and copying, you know, to get across solutions. Um, anywhere you are, if you want to add something to wherever you are, like to interface with it, uh, there's always this, you know, floating action button, uh, which is popular among Google applications, right? So again, lots of bright color iconography to try and suggest what it is you're working with. Um, we've also got support for uh, bulk image uploading um, in the media systems. The media system has really started to take shape uh, as a result of this release as far as usability, as far as um, options for embedding elsewhere. Um, let's go back to CIS, right? Because this is where you would start. So uh, the first thing you're probably going to want to do is set up a course. So the first very obvious button here is set up a course, right? Because we get that question a lot. This form is also cleaned up. So you can click called set up the course. Uh, we select, again, trying to work towards consistent iconography. Uh, we're gonna say we're gonna use a outline based one. I've also now got out of the box support for uh, Git importing. So if we use a um, Git books, uh, which is a, a way of generating markdown based uh, books, you know, authoring books online, you can actually point to a repository and it'll pull it in and import all of that into content. I'm not going to focus on that today. That's its own kind of ecosystem of stuff, but pretty cool nonetheless. So I'm going to kick that off, um, but let's see something already made. All right, so go to courses. I'm going to go to Sing 100. <clears throat> you can see we've got all these services already stamped out. Um, let's upload a banner so we can illustrate some of the ways that that's working. So you see, we have a different default banner at this point. Um, I'm gonna jump into my pictures here. We'll just grab something. Um, there we go. So it's probably not gonna be the best banner in the world, but upload it anyway to prove a point. All right, focus rectangle. This part still has to get worked on. So we'll just focus on me. So still need to define a semester here to save. All right, so biggest thing is uh, what we wanted to illustrate there. If I go back to courses, we'll see our banner is just this like, hey, you're somewhere, right? Uh, if I'm in the context of a course that has a way of representing itself, I get the banner. And now, now my available options as I go across, if I go to the iCore Interactive Content System, You'll see we also have that banner applied. I apparently was zooming the interface in to test something <laughs> at some point. Um, so, you know, I'm within the context of Sing 100. I'm adding something that's highly dynamic in nature. Um, in that regard, I've also 
we've added support for a mapping tool uh, that's pretty cool to show you what one of those looks like. You can see I've got a few random map points here. And so the mapping system uses Leaflet, um, which means you don't need Google or any of that stuff just to place a, you know, a map down. But I could jump in here, let's take that out. And I could actually just, you know, if I would have outline State College, right? Okay, so this is all built. I could do that. I could take this map point. Uh, oops, got to go into pointer mode. I believe it is pointer mode. I could click and delete that thing. I could drop another map point down and say maybe I live in the state game lands, which I do not, but just to do it, save, and you'll see it applies that to a map. Uh, then using the the embed, right, the remix stuff. Um, we've got some additional options. There's a lot more of them there, but the two that I'm really excited about is a side tab embed and a modal based embed. Uh, so I copy one of those. You know, I'm gonna kind of hopscotch around. I know I do that quite a bit in these, but just to kind of demonstrate how <laughs> advanced this is getting now. Um, so I'm in content, right? I'm gonna throw that map in the content. Uh, we're still working through some of the workflows to just bridge that so that you're doing it there. But again, I uploaded a banner for Sing 100. And so there's my banner, again, presented because I'm in the context of that course uh, with my network off to the side. As I'm building something, I'm gonna cheat here for a second and flush some caches um, here so that I get the right full network and scope. So you can see all those. Uh, and jump to a different part of the outline. And I'm gonna actually throw that token in here. So throw that token in here. Um, and let's see, there's that collapsible field set. I've done a little bit of cleanup on the uh, content templates page in general, uh, so that it's a little easier to follow what's going on. I still wanna do some more work to it, obviously, but um, you can throw down material, starting to allow you to throw down materialized components. So I wanna throw down a collapsed field set. I can throw that down. Unfortunately, the best way to edit that at the moment is, you know, literally just jump in the source because you're not going to change the body of it if it's actually collapsed. Uh, but so let's save this and see what that other token did, right? So that token generated this, right? So I've got iconography, which is, I'll show how we can modify that. So because, you know, we're using uh, Google's material design framework, we can actually search through the Google material design icon set. And so I could just type in um, map and get everything that's related to map or has the word map in it. So, um, and then this gives me the name of that icon. So in this case, if I want to use this icon, it's going to be layers um, or I could use hotel or whatever I want really, EV station for an electric vehicle, cool. Uh, so I'm going to change this so that it's a little more recognizable what it is, but so we'll put in layers here as our icon. We're going to, we're telling this to render as a side map. Uh, the title of this, we're going to be click to see state college. Um, and actually there's a hidden property in here. I still need to add state. So we'll click to see state college. And then for this, we're actually just going to name it state college. So you can see both. Now we click and again, you know, because I told it to be a side nav, flies out from the right side in this case, and I can see my map points. You can see they're way in here to where we were. Let's see if this was the area we were talking about. Uh, we've also done a lot of work on accessibility, so you can you know, tab through the entire interface and actually drill down into these sections and get back out with uh, maintaining the right context where I am. Right. Um, we can also drill into these things. We could tab, you know, into these, setting the correct focus to get between them, but not. Uh, also, on the accessibility front, we've got our preferences tab here. Um, so we've got lots of interface manipulations. You've probably seen these before if you've seen past versions of the platform. We've also got a lot of other simulations now. So you can do simulations for color blindness. Uh, field loss, dyslexia, as well as you know, highlighting what keyboard shortcuts are available. Um, and we've also got alternate formats. So if you've seen Speed Reader before, that's you know, to kind of read off 
what the material is and presenting it to you, speed it up just to do it. Um, however, there's also now print view and there's a PDF page uh, that come right out of the box. So you know, if I hit PDF page, it's gonna download that as a PDF. So I can have that as a PDF. Um, you can see we've also got some cleanup on certain interface elements. Um, our left hand block here, or sorry, right, yeah, left hand block is going to uh, show me what's at the current level. Um, and then we kind of got this drill down, right? So we've got like everything, you know, parents and breadcrumb trail, the stuff on my current level, the thing I'm actually engaging with, and then down into, uh, this is called scroll, uh, scroll spy. It's something from Materialize CSS, um, and it just does this. So if there are headings in the page, this just gets auto-generated. Um, so, for example, if I change this to things and stuff, and maybe we'll copy it, paste it down here, newness, right? So we get our hierarchy, and we can jump down real quickly. This is. Uh, Quite helpful when you have a lot of content or a very, very long page of content to be able to jump through it uh, very quickly. Um, some other things uh, we've been starting to clean up. Uh, Studio sets a lot of stuff in motion for Studio to be the next thing that really sees a lot of additional effort. Um, there's some enhancements to the assessment page, although I'd say it's not you know, 100% there. Um, there is a quiz and a type. You can start to play with that. Uh, media has really seen a lot of advancement as well as interactive assets via the mapping stuff um, as well as general stability and performance improvements. Um, the platform is becoming a lot faster, a lot more usable. Um, there's a lot more consistency in the design of different components. Um, you know, if you're testing this in like a Vagrant environment, Vagrant is, is actually faster as well. Um, so you kind of I hope start to get a sense of what it is you could do with with the platform here. Um, I think this is probably our one of our more significant releases as well because we're starting to get into uh, XAPI wiring. Uh, so you know if you're not familiar with XAPI, and it's a learning analytics standard. Um, so I can actually jump in, and this is all fake stuff, obviously, but. Um, we're starting to get into building visualizations and tracking uh, all interactions with the system itself. Um, so for example, I can see that um, three people have generated 349 statements about viewing this page. Now, obviously that's a little ridiculous um, <laughs> because it's a lot of test you know, data that I've been generating as a result of coming through the system. But we can drill in and start to look at what makes this stuff tick and see uh, the guts of XAPI statements. Um, you still need to point it at a like learning locker instance. We haven't automated the setup of that just yet, but that's not that hard um, to just start collecting stuff. We're also collecting um, interactions with video, right? So this is suggesting every time someone's clicked pause, play, the video uh, segments they've watched, whether they've jumped ahead or backward. Uh, we're also gathering information about answers uh, to H5P types of questions. So any interaction with an H5P uh, activity, any page you go to, any link you click, uh, we're able to capture that and start doing data collection. Uh, we can start filtering things and say, just show me stuff staff members have generated as far as playing, and I don't know if this will generate anything, but you can see we can filter that data down. So, and you can see the filters applied, right? So on the page things and stuff, where they've clicked, or where it's been a play action, so clicking in a video, and they're a staff member. Well, there's just one person. Uh, I can drill into, you know, in this case, me, and say, uh, let me see that user's data. And so we've now got play, all the things I've played in this case, you know, no matter where they are. Um, and then I can click through that and see, I've actually played a lot of different videos and things. Um, we can reset the filters on this. And so now, and this will be a ton of meaningless data at this point, we'll see I have generated 3,814 statements <laughs> as I've gone through, uh, grouped again by, you know, what action I was undertaking. Obviously viewed is gonna get a lot more than anything else. 
Um, we're also been working on visualizations, and this is this one doesn't make a ton of sense yet, but it's uh, a pie chart that's basically just you know sum weighting uh, those those statements. So you know, I could see at a glance that uh, viewed statements are substantially more of the pie than everything else. Um, it's mostly just getting that set in motion. Um, the next release will have a lot more drill into you know statistics and starting to answer questions, um, you know as far as usage and engagement. Um, another thing that has now become you know it is shown to people uh, as standard you know stabilized if you will uh, has to do with read time. So the the pages are kind of self aware. Um, if you've seen me talk about this before. Um, based on the content and material in this course, this course currently knows that it is one hour and 10 minutes of reading effectively. Um, there's you know, a nightly interval that refreshes these things so that we can have that updated uh, as you put in you know, new videos and things like that. But uh, the idea is that we could start to build, you know, I'm hoping, right, we could build like a lesson two landing page dynamically and say, well, lesson one took you this long because we're tracking all of this data. Lesson two, you know, we've calculated should take you about this long and start to almost build a you know, kind of dynamic um, reporting system for students as they go through the material, um, which is kind of the gateway to adaptive path learning and, you know, Mozilla badge type of stuff, right? It's just having all of this data and starting to be able to you know, even just point out uh, trends and things in the user's data. So a lot of work in learning analytics, a lot of work uh, yet to be done, obviously. Um, sorry. So you can see we've also, you know, we've got this outline in place. Um, Something we're setting up for, you know, this is quite frankly down the road, is um, notion of learning pathways. This is ultra prototype, which is why I haven't actually linked to it anywhere. Uh, but you know, if you could imagine that we would have um, lessons in this right now is just visualizing the highest level lesson organizer, right? Um, so it's taking that outline, turning it into like a chapter listing or whatever. Um, if we took this and we cleaned up the visualization of it and we made it much more grid-like, you could start to have a dynamically kind of built grid um, indicating what's required in what order at some level, but allowing for branching functionality. Maybe I want students to be able to do eight or nine or you know eight, nine or 10 or pick two of these um, that we could start to visualize that, use the XAPI data to suggest what it is they have completed um, as well as what you know is related material, things like that. So there's a lot of a lot of gateway type of stuff uh, thrown into the platform as part of this release. Uh, we've also got, you know, mentioned uh, cleanup of media and other systems. Uh, we now have support for image galleries as well as bulk image uploading, as I mentioned. Uh, Safar can say, hey, upload those next. Um, we got to clean up the form for this a bit, but it takes the file name into account as your title. Um, and then I'm just going to complete upload so they're all up there. And so now I've got my, so I've got my pictures posted up there. I could then take those and do an image gallery. Uh, let's say that it's for Singular 100 and we're gonna add existing images. And I don't know what the names of these are, so I might have to, there we go, <laughs> add image. Uh, clearly we want a more, you know, uh, media centric workflow for this. I don't like, you know, clicking buttons type of a thing. It'd be nice to just drag and drop them all up there and then say, I want this to be an image gallery, but take it in its current state. Uh, I can then say, oh, what are my display options for this? Right. And we've started to get some you know, using the image styles in conjunction with uh, some, you know, JavaScript that's available to us. We can turn it into a carousel. We can turn it into a big carousel. We can turn it into um, actually an impact viewing uh, image comparison tool, um, which you know the images for this don't make a lot of sense in that context. Um, we could also have you know more of a basic image gallery of cycling through, right? But the important thing is that this still just relates back to a nice little token, so I can jump over to 
my course content just like anything else. And I can throw in my token. And now I've got that cool image gallery that's responsive and the auto light boxes, all that great stuff of just right in the flow um, of the material here. You can also, we've got contextual editing. So now that I have that token in, I can jump directly to manipulating this, right? So, and then, oh shoot, you know, I actually forgot one of my images in that set. Uh, we want, I believe it was 11 add. And then we want to move that one to the first one. Save. And now my photo gallery on the other side, everywhere the photo gallery is used, now has my update reflected, which is a big part of why we do that by reference type of a thing. So if you haven't played with you know, Elms uh, today, you want to play with what I showed today here, um, you can go to elmsln.org and uh, check out the demo. Uh, we've also got additional support for uh, more server types if you go and want to spin up an actual deployment um, or you know be a vagrant or uh, you know get more involved you can check us out on github at github.com slash elms ln uh, slash elms ln is the main project and see we've got a lot more contributors now uh, it project is gpl based and uh, we'll just keep pushing forward, making cool stuff.